Yo, 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 what up, players? Hope all is well. Welcome to another full PC build guide. If you've never built a PC before, you're good. I got you. You've come to the right place. Here, we show you how to do everything from start to finish. By the time you're done watching this video, you will have full confidence to build your own system for the first time. Today, we're going to be working with a $700 USD budget. You guys are going to be really excited to find out what the performance is for this build. First, we're going to be going over all the parts we picked and their prices. Second, I'm then going to be walking you guys through the whole process on how to build it. Third, we're going to be installing all the necessary drivers we need for the PC to run smooth and fourth, the very end the fun part we're going to get down we're going to be putting our system to the test against all current popular AAA titles yo guys some quick update before we jump into the build first we finally created a discord server it's linked in the video description go join we made a bunch of channels for different stuff like tech support i know when you finish your build sometimes things go wrong so we can help each other out in that channel we also created a channel where you can post a picture of your finished build guide that you followed along to another channel to share a pic of your full desk setup second update we're going to be relocating to a different state i'm going to make the move asap but just keep in mind that the next video is going to be a minute third update guys i'm going to be dropping a fat discount code in the discord server and when i say fat discount i mean fat discount guys all creative teams if you want to find out exactly just just how much go join the discord server and you're gonna find out just a little celebration of because i'm moving and because now we have a discord server i want you guys to help to make it the chillest discord ever and i want to hook you guys up with some crater tees let's get into it okay so our most exciting component first our graphics card we went with an evj nvidia geforce gtx 1660 super what are we going to be pairing our graphics card with a ryzen 5 5500 cpu this is a six core cpu it comes with a stock heatsink and that's what we're going to be using to save some bucks so we're going to be throwing our ryzen 5 cpu in a b 550 chipset motherboard this is by asus and it's the micro atx form factor it's ryzen 5000 series ready so don't worry about any bios updates so micro atx motherboard calls for a micro atx case this is a deep cool case for our storage we went with a 500 gigabyte m.2 ssd this is the wd blue model for the ram 16 gigabytes rated at 3200 megahertz look at the price the price of ram right now is really 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 nice i like it a lot for the juice we're going to be powering it with an evga power supply this is bronze rated and 600 watts all right guys first we're gonna be working with our cpu and our motherboard let's open it up we're gonna want to get our board out io shield and these little screws for our ssd so if we take a look at our cpu guys on the bottom left hand side there's a little golden arrow and if we take a look at our cpu socket on our motherboard on the top left there's a little arrow so first we're gonna lift this lever to the side and all the way up. And then we're gonna line up the golden arrow of the CPU with the arrow on the CPU socket. We're gonna place the CPU on top and just let it fall right into place, just like that. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna put in the CPU, have it not go in and then push it in because that will bend your pins, you don't want that. So again, just hover it over and let it fall right in like that. Then we pull the lever all the way back down. So now we're gonna install our heat sink. First, we wanna unscrew both of these. Get it out of there. So our stock heatsink already has a thermal paste applied, so don't worry about that. So I'm gonna have the AMD text on the left-hand side. And we're gonna line up all four points of the heatsink with the four points on the motherboard. So I'm gonna screw in one of the sides a little bit, get it to attach, and then I'm gonna screw in the side across from that, get that to attach a little bit, and move on to the other two. So then once I have them all attached a little bit, then I'll go ahead and screw in one of them all the way. And you can't over tighten it because the screwdriver will just stop. It has a safety, so there, that one's done. I do screws across from each other in the beginning just to keep even pressure when screwing it in. Now we're gonna connect the fan to the CPU fan header on our motherboard right here. Cool, CPU done. Next, our RAM. All right, guys, so we're gonna be putting our RAM in the second and fourth slot. So make sure you pull back the levers and the RAM only goes in one way. So make sure you line up the indent of the RAM where it's not indented on the RAM slot. So this way, I'm gonna put it in, then push down with both thumbs equal force. It should go in all the way and the lever will clip back up. All right, RAM's done. Now we're gonna move on to our SSD. So our M.2 SSD is gonna go into here, but first we need to install a standoff right here and let's go ahead and put it in and then we secure it with the screw remember this standoff and this screw comes in a little bag inside your motherboard all right storage installed now we're ready to put our motherboard inside our case so we've worked with this case before but in the white color way and the screws we need are located right here first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the io shield so we're going to put it in from the inside of the case we're going to line it up in this position with the ethernet port on the right hand side and we're going to clip in all four sides 
All right, guys, so when installing any motherboard inside a case, you want to make sure that the motherboard standoffs are in the appropriate position for your motherboard. This is micro ATX warm factor, and the standoffs inside this case are already in the appropriate position, so you're ready to go. No need to change anything. So first, I line up the ports of the motherboard with the I.O. shield, and then once I have that lined up, I then line up the middle standoff with the motherboard like that and then there you go i'm gonna be screwing it in now i would do this with the case laying down it's easier i'm doing it standing up just so you guys can see it better in the video i'm gonna be securing it with this screw right here that comes with the case all right guys so we're gonna be screwing in one two three four five six seven eight points Cool, motherboard's in, guys. Next, we're gonna be installing the juice. Here's the screws to secure it to the case. You always wanna make sure that the fan's facing down, and we're gonna put it right into here. And we secure it with the screws it came with. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be hooking up optional custom sleeve power supply cables because they're gonna look super awesome. Originally, this 24 pin power cable would have hooked up directly to the motherboard. So now instead, I'm gonna hook it up to our custom sleeve purple power supply cable. And now this will hook up to the motherboard instead. So I'm only gonna be using it for that cable and this one right here, our graphics card cable. So our 1660 Super only needs eight pins of juice. So just one of these. All right, guys, time to connect cables. Now, this is super simple. Do not be intimidated. We're gonna take it one cable at a time and we're gonna break our cables into two groups. So the first group is our power supply cables. The second group is our case cables, which connect our power button and our USB ports up here in the front of our case. And then the last group of cables is the fans. And this case only comes with one fan pre-installed, but we're going to be adding a second one to the front just to keep even airflow. So we're going to start with our case cables on the bottom left-hand side of our motherboard. First, we're going to be connecting our HD audio cable. It's going to plug in to these pins right here. It only goes in one way and it should look like that. So now we're going to move over right here. This is where we're gonna hook up our USB 3.0 cable. So one of the sides is flat and the other sides has this little hump right here. So we wanna line up this little hump right here on the right hand side of this. So we're gonna line it up straight to not bend the pins, push it in all the way. Now, if we move to the bottom of our motherboard, now these pins right here is where we're gonna be hooking up our JFP1 cable. So I'll throw a chart up on the screen to help us. First, we're gonna hook up our HDD LED cable. Notice how there's a little arrow. That means the positive side. So the positive side on the left and we're gonna hook it into the bottom row, first and second pins, just like that. Now for the rest of the cables, positive and negative, it doesn't matter. So for our power switch, we're gonna hook it into the first row, third and fourth pins. So it should look like that so far. Now right under our power switch in the second row, third and fourth pins is where we're gonna hook up our reset switch. And there we go, JFP1 done. Cool guys, that was easy. Now moving on to our power supply cables. First, we're gonna hook up our big 24 pin cable. So this little clip right here needs to clip into the right hand side, so lining it up straight and pushing in all the way. That one's good to go. Now, if we move to the top left side of our board, right here is where we're gonna hook up our CPU power cable. So again, the pins need to clip on top and the cable will be labeled CPU. Make sure it goes in all the way and it should look like that. Now our last power cables for our graphics card, we'll set that to the side for now. So this case comes with one fan right here. I'm gonna be adding a second fan to the front of the case. Gotta remove the front cover like that. So this fan right here lights up. It's just the one I had laying around the studio. And then I'm gonna wire the fan cable to the back of the case. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna be using a two-way fan splitter to connect the two fans to our motherboard. So we're gonna hook up the fan splitter to the chassis fan header right here. And it's labeled chassis fan. Now let's go to the back of our case. We're gonna hook up the fan that came with the case to the fan splitter. And the second fan we just installed in the front to the splitter. Done. All right, guys, so we're done connecting all our cables except the graphics card, so time to install it. And here we have our 1660. It's rocking a black and gray color theme. Big old EVGA GeForce GTX Super right here. For the video ports, one DVI, one HDMI, one display port. All right, guys, so we need to make room for it by removing the second and third brackets. So we just push it out, and there we go. All right, so we're gonna be hooking it up to our PCI slot and we're gonna pull the lever all the way back. We're gonna unscrew this and pull this all the way back. And now we're ready to line up our card and then push it in. The lever will clip back up and you'll hear a clip. Get this out of here. It's in the way right now. Then we secure it with two screws that come with the case. Put this back on. Now last, we connect the juice. And we're done with all the cables, guys. Nice. Ah, last, our Funko Pop placement right here. Does that look good? Of course it does, I built it. All right, I'm gonna put everything back together real quick. Mm. 
Nice, it's complete. Look how premium it looks, guys, with that tempered glass side panel. And we're gonna turn it on for the first time. Boom. All right, guys, here's the finished product. I think it came out pretty sick. Remember, we've covered a lot of budgets here on the channel. So if your budget is higher or lower, we have a bunch of full build guides. If you haven't turned on bell notifications for the channel, be sure to do so so you can be alerted for future builds we drop here on the channel. All right, guys, we're gonna be installing everything and then we're gonna frag it up. Let's do it. All right guys, so first we're gonna install Windows from a USB flash drive. I made a video on how to create one of these for free. It's linked in the video description, or you can buy a Windows flash drive from Best Buy. Second, we're gonna install all the drivers we need. Third, we're gonna make sure our RAM is running at its rated speed. Fourth, we're gonna then install the game and start fragging it up. Let's do it. So I'm gonna hook up our Windows flash drive to our system and power it on. I'm gonna boot up directly to the Windows flash drive. I don't have it. I'm gonna be installing Windows 10 Pro next. Custom. If you had more hard drives or SSDs hooked up to your system, they would all pop up here and you select where you want to install Windows. We only have one, so there you go. Now we wait for all the Windows files to copy over from the flash drive to our M.2 SSD. Once we get to this screen, you can disconnect the flash drive. All files have been copied over. Download Armory Create App. No, I'm okay. I'm already connected to the internet through an Ethernet cable. If you want to use Wi Fi, you have to purchase a USB Wi Fi adapter on Amazon. They're like eight bucks. All right, guys, so we're going to head over to our motherboard's website. We're going to select our operating system, Windows 10, and we're going to be downloading our LAN driver, our chipset driver, audio driver and that's it let's drag them all to our desktop and before we can install our motherboard drivers we have to extract them right click extract all extract do the same for the others all right we don't need the zipped ones anymore delete so let's install our audio one first and we're going to go to asus setup yes all right well that's doing its thing we can move on to the other one amd chipset software i installed the drivers at the same time because pc master race and the last one, LAN driver, a suit setup. Pretty much it's a matter of double clicking the driver and then just clicking next, next, next. I'm gonna install everything except this. Uncheck that, install. All right, we've finished installing all three of our drivers, so I can restart now. Okay, cool. Motherboard driver's done. We could delete these. Now we're gonna be downloading the GeForce Experience program. This program lets you download the newest drivers for your NVIDIA graphics card. The program also lets you stream from it and record your gameplay from it. So it's a very well-rounded program. Also, guys, every website we're visiting in this video will be linked in the video's description for your convenience. So we head over to drivers and we click download. Express installation. Yes. Okay, all drivers installed. Let's restart our system. When our computer's restarting, keep clicking delete on your keyboard to boot up to our BIOS where we'll be changing our RAM speed. Cool, we're in our BIOS and as you can see, our RAM is only running at 2133 megahertz when it's rated for 3200 megahertz. Let's go to advanced mode, AI tweaker, AI overclock tuner, we're gonna change it from auto to DOCP. Now, as you can see, our RAM is gonna run at 3200 megahertz. Exit, save changes and reset. Okay, to check everything's all good in the neighborhood, control alt delete. Task Manager, click down here, Performance, Memory. As you can see, now it's running at 3200 megahertz. Now we're ready to install a game. A lot of clients on PC, we're gonna be using Steam as the example. I'm gonna be installing Apex Legends. Next, next. Cool, finished. Also, if this is your very first PC build, comment down below what's gonna be the first PC game you're gonna be installing. Anyways guys, let's jump into it and see what our little budget build's capable of. All right, guys, Apex time. 1080p resolution, of course. FOV's at 110. Reflex on enabled plus boost. And here are the rest of the settings. Let's get it. Oh, my goodness, man. Oh, crap. Did I feel bad? Yeah! All right, performance is great. If you're rocking a 144 hertz monitor, you're covered for Apex on this rig. Next game, settings we're using for Valorant, reflex on on plus boost, the graphics quality, here it is. Ah, caught me slipping. This buzzer. Ah. Five kills remaining. Buzz, we gotta hurry up. Popped off in the beginning, but we did not bring home the W. All good though. Next game. Settings for Fortnite, 1080p resolution, and here are the rest of the settings. Let's go. That's too bad. Bad luck for you, boy. Oh, 
that supposed to help you? Bruh. Oh shit. No! Alright guys, moving on to Rust, 1080p. Here are the rest of the graphic settings and here are the image effects. Let's get it. Alright, gun game. Ooh, that counted. Nice. Shoot! Oh, I think I just got killed by the last guy. I lost right there by one slice. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, we're gonna jump into some Halo Infinite now. Settings are rocking. 78 FOV. We turned the resolution scale from 100 all the way down because we need all the FPS we can get. Infinite's not that well optimized. And the rest of our settings are right here. Medium preset. Do it. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, get dumb, kid. Victory. Yeah. That was a good game. Hopping onto some Rainbow Six Siege now. Settings, 60 by 10 aspect ratio, FOV to the max. And here are the graphics settings. Let's do it. All right, watch this. I'm gonna show you how to rush. Okay, baby. All right, guys, you tell me when. Where they at? Hi, buddy. Ah. Yeah. Oh, we take those, we take those. performance is awesome next game moving on to call of duty warzone reflex low latency on enable plus boost our quality 120 fov and here are the rest of the settings let's go All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up right there. That was a lot of fun. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for all you guys' love and support. Peace. <laughs>